Hey Josh, first in, welcome. Hey Josh, Jeff, Chad, how you all doing? <clears throat> good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Boris. Good evening, Hot Rod Bob. Good evening, Jack. How's the dust making going, Jack? So um, I'm using this uh, new Samsung phone. You guys might remember I uh, tried out a Samsung phone a while back, a while ago, and I sent it back. Well, I decided in the end to just re repurchase the same phone. It's a uh, an Amazon renewed phone, and um, for the money, it's great value. I'm just going to plug in some power. There we go. Yeah, it's 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 also a much wider angle. I can actually go in quite a bit closer. It does distort the image at the sides, not much I can do about that. I still haven't worked out how you can change lenses uh, for a live, or if it goes by default to the wide angle. I haven't worked it out yet. Anyhow, so there's a few things. Um, I wanted to show you guys, besides, before I get to my pipes, what I wanted to show you is my current pipe collection, in other words, the pipes that I smoke. We'll get to that soon. We'll uh, allow some more people to come in. I'm just going to clean my glasses. I decided to do a more traditional London calling this evening and not go outside. So I'm going to just focus on the pipe or a cigar, whatever it is I happen to be smoking. Marlin Flake in an Escorty. Cool. Well, I'm going to be popping. Look how long my arm looks here. Um, Plum pudding, bourbon barrel aged, which James sent me. We'll be doing that shortly. I'll do a separate um, impressions video. I guess it won't be a first impressions, but it'll be an impressions video. I thought that was a shadow from my hand, it's not, it's from the lamp. Uh, right, so what should we smoke it in? I think I'm going to smoke it in my... Uh, this is my Boswell, Bent Apple. This is the first Boswell that I bought. Hey Igor. 
Well, the slave idea was first championed by McClellan's, of course. Um, I think the first time they did that was with the, the aged uh, barrel something or other it was called. And then, of course, they did it with the Frogmorton cellar. Hey, Diogo, how you doing? St. James Flake in Portugal, huge heat wave. St. James is nice, especially if it's got some age on it. Oh, James is here. Welcome, James. I just wanted you to wait till you arrived. I'm going to crack this tin, try it for the first time, courtesy of your good self. Let me turn this lamp off for a sec and see if the light equalizes. There we go. I don't know if you prefer it with the if you prefer it with the warmer lighting or as it is now. Oh, nice! Two and a half years. How's it going, James? You all right? You having a good weekend so far? So when I do get to my pipe uh, collection, it's all my pipes aside from the ones which are outside in the garage. And there's probably about 10 pipes out there, something like that. Anyway, so, um, so most of you would have seen this by now. This is the uh, pipe set that I'm making. Um, so the pipe, you know by now which really turned out great. There's a Zebrano band on there. So I essentially went to try and make, the guy asked me to also make a tamper. So I made a tamper. Also with Zebrano on the top there. Straightforward, easy, very uh, utilita utilitarian, utilitarian. Um, you know, simple, will do the job nicely. Um, I then thought, you know, I had some scraps of uh, pine lying around. So I cut up uh, I cut off a, a section of this pine and then I added some scales, I suppose you'd call them, on the side of Zebrano. We glued them on, sanded them down and drilled the hole for the tamper, chipped away a little bit of that wood there but can't be helped. Um, and then what I did was I drilled a hole, um, put a, a strong um, rare earth magnet inside and then cut another disc on the lathe um, to fit exactly in the hole and I put a taper on it so it would wedge in, glued it and I still need to finish off the sanding, you can still see some marking on there so I still need to sand that off and um, I did get, I, I was having trouble finding the round um, balls to put inside but I found a sort of a disc rather than a ball so it's like a, almost like a watch battery and it works just fine but yesterday or the day before I did find so it works perfect and it stands, it's just beautiful. Um, but yesterday or the day before I did find some balls and they arrived today. I'm not sure. I assume that they will be magnetic. I have no reason to believe otherwise. All right, we're back. Just uh, if you could confirm if you can hear me, guys, anyone? Okay, we're back. Cool, thank you, guys. Okay, so this is... Um, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, a few days ago, I was doing a live, and it crashed. Um, and that was that. I had to restart. This time, when I went back on to try and restart a new live it says new live or resume so i clicked resume and it's let me back on i don't know why it uh, went off this i don't know. don't know what happened there but um, at least we don't have to go off and on again um, anyway so what i was saying was is that i got these um the balls came in today so i'm going to try that No, 
doesn't work. There is some magnetism there, but it's it's not strong. Alright, well that was a waste of time. But at least this one works. This one works very firmly. Well, I'll have to find another use for these uh, balls. I guess you have to get a pure steel. This is probably mixed with other stuff. It's probably an alloy of some kind. Yeah, I could try a couple of them, but it's pointless. I'm not going to send them out with a, a whole a bowl full of uh, balls. So if it works with one, I'll just carry on using the ones that I've got. Hey Bruno. So this is a very near completion. Um, I've, I've got to still sand it and I'm trying to sort of get the colouring of the scales there to match the colouring on the band and I haven't been able to do that so far. Um, it's the same wood but it's much brighter on this one. But if it's not precise, it's not precise. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. I just like the whole concept. I, I haven't seen this with the, you know, this idea of the wood matching and the disc sort of incorporated into the stand. Well, at the moment, the first batch that I got, James, is these uh, discs, the neodyme discs, and that seems to be a purer steel. The other ones are, uh, the balls seem to be a, an alloy, and I think that's probably because they're designed for um, for shot, for, sh for shooting, um, that kind of thing. Um, so I imagine that there's some reason why they're an alloy as opposed to a purer wood, a purer metal. So um, I've got to, I'm finding this pine quite difficult to sand to get a nice finish. I don't know if any of you guys have got a suggestion on that front. Um, usually, um, I, when I do hand sanding, I usually start at about 180 grit. When I'm doing it on the disc, hey Tim, how are you doing? It's Neodyne, um, I don't know what it was called, I'll send you the link. Um, yeah, so usually I'll do it on a disc which is about 60 grit or even 40 grit. But that will make very deep grooves in this pine. And um, I'm just not entirely sure what to do on this. Maybe I'll have to start as, at a low grit and then just it'll take time. I was thinking of maybe doing a bit of a texture, um, but I don't know how this pine will react to that. Um, and so I don't want to ruin it, but uh, so I'll probably just have to get back to sanding it. And hopefully within the next couple of days it'll be ready to send to the buyer. I mean the pipe and tamper are done a long time ago but the it's just finishing it off. So I'll leave that over there. And I've done a little bit of reshuffling on my desk which has given me a little bit more space. So this stand that used to be over there I'm now able to move my screen and fit the stand in there. And I've got James's stand and I've got my bamboo pipe on there, whereas before it was just sitting on the table upright. So it's nice to be able to have a home. And, um, and this pipe used to be in the front here, it was now on the side. So I've got more space. Hey Cascadian, how you doing? All right, so I think uh, 320 to 400 grit, even as a starting point, You can see the markings there on it, and then you can see those scratches over there. And um, I tried sanding it with. I've got to go lower than than uh, three twenty four hundred. That I mean three twenty four hundred will be fine for finishing it, I suppose. I don't need to go much higher than that for a stand, but 
I need to go lower to get rid of those scratches. And I can't, I don't know what grit created those scratches. Uh, three to four hundred ain't gonna do it. It's not gonna go deep enough to get rid of those scratches unless I literally sand it all day long. G'day, Glenn. Greetings. All right, well, let's get cracking because I have not yet had a uh, pipe today. I haven't had any kind of smoke today. I had a bit of snuff earlier on, but that was about it. So, plum pudding, bourbon, barrel aged. Sixty and up. Ouch. Ooh, that smells good. So you get these cakes in there with a stave. So that'll be the the bourbon, and that's it. Got a really similar aroma to your to, uh, to your tobacco uh james the one that you sent me the the caramel cake very very similar well all right let me read this how to improve upon perfection sipping his favorite bourbon gave master blender joe lagford an idea world famous original plum pudding packed into charred oak kentucky bourbon barrels aged 30 days pressed <coughs> it's really catching in my throat this aroma Pressed into cakes and crumble cake cut. The result, a heavenly marriage of spirits and the best Balkan blend ever made. A chunk of bourbon barrel rests in every tin. Complex, smoky, spicy and still positively addictive. Plum pudding bourbon aged barrel is Joe's dream come true. Enjoy the ingredients. Latakia, Turkish Orientals, Virginia's Cavendish and Perique. I think what's giving it this, this is really so similar to your, to your, um, to your blend. It's unbelievable. It's got that really, originally when I first smelled your one, James, I thought maybe there was some wine in it or something, but it's um, it's that marriage of the Orientals, the bourbon, obviously, and possibly the Perique, but it's making such a, a heady kind of mix. When you breathe it in, you put your nose and breathe it in, it's quite heady. Wow. All right, let's get some onto the tray. As soon as I find my tray, there it is. There's a little bit of moisture there. Um, I do find with a lot of whiskey blends that you do have some moisture from the sugar content in the whiskey, and you do get a little bit of stickiness sometimes. Okay, I'm not gonna break up a huge amount. That'll do for now. I guess so, people are using them for all different types of drinks and things like that, different spirits to add flavor, so I guess. Hey, Patrick. So this also arrived today. I was watching um, um, Uncle Phil's cellar when he does those four-way chats that he has. He does, he records a four-way Zoom chat um, and they talk about a particular tobacco, they try out a particular tobacco. And uh, they tried out Samuel Gallus Perfection. Which I'm not a stranger to. Um, Samuel Gallus Perfection is a tobacco that I have tried. In the past and didn't particularly care for it. But after after watching their uh, discussion about it I decided to give it another try because it would have been quite a while ago that I tried it. What's this? Oh right, they've sent a freebie. 
and some cigarettes. That's nice. Very nice. blend all right comes with a filter I've never tried those perhaps we'll try that they've got a filter on so it's kind of encouraging you to inhale those which it's not something I do Oh, I like this. They seal this with a plastic seal around it nowadays. That's news to me. Candle tobacco. Perfection. Oh, they don't even say what's in it anymore. All they tell you is smoking coals. Well, they, I think they were having some trouble with the seals on there. So it's good to see that they're doing that. So this will be in a video soon as well, this one. I've got two tins. Alright, just got an email that pipe 404 is sold, which is cool. to an existing customer so I gave him a good price. In case you haven't seen it, it's pipe 404. Amazing green. Hand cut Cumberland stem. Yes, Jeff. Well, it has now. Hey, Andrew. Simply red. What are you on about? Simply red. Um, right. So that's. It's very sweet. I like top of cream or something vanilla, but still, I prefer flake tobacco. Is it not a flake? I'm assuming it's a mixture then, but as far as I know, it's 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 a it's a Balkan blend with some vanilla. Um, so there's a, there's a new um, some bear coming out by the way, um, towards uh, what is it the eleventh in nine days time apparently. I tried perfection and didn't like it. I must be honest. I tried it a good while ago, so I'm just thinking that maybe now I will like it. Um, if I don't like it, then. I guess somebody will get the tin. <laughs> or I'll just leave it in my cellar to age. I'm going to open this up. I'm not going to smoke it now, because I'm going to smoke that first. I just want to see what these are like. I've had um, the small... I don't remember what make they were, what brand, but um, GQ Tobacco has also sent me some of these to try. Um, and they were pretty good. Um, I wonder if I've still got some. Yeah. So he sent me these ones. These are slightly taller, double filter. So these are just little tiny cigars, and they're very, really good for a five-minute smoke. Uh, and I'd even consider buying some of them and keeping them in the humidor. No reason why not. Um, and they're they're not a lot of money. They're a few pounds, if I remember correctly. Why did you open the darn thing? There we go. Like the old cigarette packets. I haven't opened one of those in 30 years. Oh, it doesn't open like a cigarette packet, though, does it? That would be too simple. Fancy. Oh, look, there's, there's space for two more, but the only four more, three more. But you only get three. It's a freely sample, so I can't complain. Hey, So why has that one got a little band on it? Those ones, and this one hasn't. 
of Binad. Very tight draw from the filter. Okay, that will be interesting to try at some point. It is like a cigarette, but it is. it looks like it is cigar leaf though. That's certainly what it looks like. Almost ready. I don't know if this is what it's usually like, but it does feel rather stiff. Yeah, I think that's what it's usually like. I probably need to redrill this, but I don't like messing around with a pipe made by Boswells. This room really smells of that aroma, that bourbon. It's a really sweet smelling bourbon, I have to say. It really does remind me of, of uh, James's tobacco. Not quite as uh, moist as James's. Did I get an email about the Levat? Was that about the commission you're talking about, Gary? Did I not respond to that? Oh right, when did you send the email Gary? If you sent it today or last night then I haven't seen it yet. Get the bourbon straight away. Uh, no worries, Glenn. Welcome back. I'll have to have a look at that, Gary. You're talking about the Parker. You're talking about the Parker of that. Talking about this one. No, I wouldn't come back this one. Uh, six mil maybe. 
but even six mil, I don't think I would want to mess around with it. Actually, you might be able to even just drill the existing tenon. If, it, if it's possible to drill the tenon, then yes, I would say it's worth it. Um, if not, then I wouldn't bother messing with it. As much as I'd like to sell the pipe, I wouldn't bother. Oh, nice one, Andrew. Well, you'll have to stop enjoying yourself just for a short time in order to get some footage, because in the past you've had too much of a good time. And I would never say don't have a good time, so you'll just have to see how it works out. But it'll be really cool to see some of that. Have you got like a like a clamp or something like that that you could stick it on one of the masts so you can just leave it on recording? Uh, like a GoPro or something like that. This phone camera is unbelievable. It's so wide. It's getting the whole depth of my desk. I think I chose the wrong pipe for this tobacco. I'm going to have to look at this uh, pipe. The drawer is really tight. And it, I don't remember it being tight. But the tobacco tastes really nice. All right, so I'm going to start bringing the pipes out. I'm smoking the barrel aged plum pudding which uh, James sent me um, and I'll have to, I think I'll have to try and find a way to buy some to maybe keep some in my cellar because it, it's really really nice. You know sometimes it takes a few smokes to really appreciate a tobacco and sometimes you know from the off that you like it. Sandro. <laughs> You're a naughty boy. Alright, so I've pretty much got the pipes out. 
that I'm going to show you. There are some outside and there are some which are unsmoked and there are some which are kind of hovering between my rotation and being sold. So I'm not showing you all of those because you've probably seen them all in sales and things like that. But these are the pipes that I smoke. Some of them rarely, but I still, they still get smoked and some of them get smoked all the time. Because work actually gets done on my workbench as opposed to and I've prepared it for you guys if you look at the other half of my desk it looks the same as my workbench outside hey Rusty This coffee's good. Now the ones that I'm showing you now are my regular rotation and collection pipes that get smoked, my own pipes that I smoke. It's not to say that they won't ever come into a sale at some point, but for now these are the pipes that I smoke. The ones I do possess other pipes that I have smoked that are in my drawers, but they're not smoked regularly and they have already been shown for sale or they will be. Thank you, Josh. Hi, Dave. Hope you're well. Let's just reload my pipe. Well, James, thank you very much for getting me this tobacco. It's really, really tasty. Liking it a lot. What I like about this tobacco, as I say, I will do a video separately for it, but what I like about this tobacco is that the Latakia doesn't overpower. In fact, the Latakia is quite laid back. And the Latakia just adds a little bit of spice, a little bit of a top note of spice. Um, it just kind of, you have the whole flavor profile in your mouth, and there's that little bit of Latakia sitting at the top, just giving you an edge of Latakia, but it doesn't take over the, the flavor profile. And I think he's done a cracker here again, like Joe Langford. He has done some epic legendary tobaccos. And uh, the, he's put out quite a few blends now. He must have something like 20 or so blends by now, if not more. I mean, he was he became famous for the Mississippi River, a blend which I never really appreciated. Tried it quite a few times, and I've got an open jar of it somewhere. But I, I really found it to be very weak, very bland. Maybe I need to try it again, I don't know. Mm. He does do Orientals a lot. But I think he's getting into a legendary straight status a little bit. Maybe not quite uh, McClelland um, status, but he's getting there. Hey, Smarty. Is, it that, is that the only pipe? Um, that gets hot. Do you have any other pipes that don't get hot? Other tobaccos that don't get hot? There's a lot of questions that you need to really answer. So, do you smoke the same tobacco in another pipe and it doesn't get hot? Do you smoke other tobacco in that pipe and it doesn't get hot? Or does everything you smoke in it get hot in that pipe 
but not necessarily in another pipe. Oh, okay, interesting. It's the only one. Um, hmm. This is not like Frog Morton Cellar at all for me. Not at all. I mean, yes, it's got it's got bourbon and it's got a Steve and it's got some Latakia, but for me, it's very different to uh, Frog Morton Cellar. It's a far more desserty kind of smoke for me. Frog Morton Cellar is still um, Oriental Ford um, to my taste. Yes, it's got the the whiskey flavour in there, but the Latakia and the Orientals are more forward in that blend. In this blend, I find it to be a much more balanced affair. Much, much more balanced. Is it a new pipe, uh, Smarty? Yeah, you might need to just still build up some cake in there, just build up a little bit of a carbon layer to help keep things, um, to protect the bowl and to stop eating up so much. If you're not having that problem with other pipes, then I, I wouldn't worry too much about your packing method and things like that. Presumably you're used to doing that. Um, but it's very possible that because you don't feel the tongue bite because of the P-lip, it could be that you're smoking it faster than you would in, in, in the other pipes, or any of the other pipes' P-lips. Exactly, opossum. It's the only peel of it. That could be a reason. It could be that you're not getting the tongue bite. The tongue bite will often uh, sort of guide you to slow down your puffing. Um, and it could be that you're, um, you're puffing too fast because you're not getting tongue bite. So see, consciously try to focus on that, on how quickly you puff on it, and then smoke one of your other pipes and see how quickly you puff on that, um, and see if there's a difference. But it's also a new pipe. It could be uh, uh, um, uh, just a few things together, you know. The fact that it's a new pipe, the fact that it's a P-lip. And it could be the walls of this particular pipe are thinner than your other pipes. You could try, is what I do whenever I break in a new pipe, is, um, although you've um, smoked it a few times now, but clean it out um, and then put a, a good helping of honey on the inside of the pipe, uh, on the walls of the pipe. Just put some honey on your finger and just swipe the whole surface of the pipe inside um, and then smoke a bowl. Um, you might find that will help just to create a new barrier. Uh, might help. I've never tried to make a peanut pipe. I've tried smoking it, but I've never tried making one, no. Hey, Jose. Um, the ones that I'm uh, showing now are not for sale. If, if everybody's interested, I can certainly move over to show pipes that are for sale, some of my older pipes, maybe. See if we can work out some easy, sort of cheaper deals. I'm happy to do that, but the primary uh, focus of tonight was supposed to be showing um, my current rotation. I haven't done that in a while. Um, I just thought it would be nice to do it live and to talk about the pipes, answer any questions.
Thank you, Jose. Um, I wouldn't pack it too tight, though, because if you're going to have to draw too hard on it, you might heat it up as well and, and give yourself a bit of jaw ache. you got to find that balance yourself, but it certainly sounds like you need to slow down a bit. Well, um, I'm pretty sure that um, Mike Billington makes them, um, although whether he uses preformed stems or not, that I don't know. I, mean, I have some preformed P-lips as well, but I've never used one. That I don't know, Glenn. I honestly don't know that. Yes, I really does. You're right, James. I guess they must make it slightly differently because Peterson, I mean, that was their thing going back at the turn of the century, of the 20th century. Maybe I'll try the Peter again. I mean, I've got no reason to, really. I suppose the only reason to try the Peter again would be to try smoking again without a, a filter, possibly. I don't think Peterson's going to worry about any artisan pipe maker making a, a PDIP type of thing. Um, so the Grey's done some, yeah? I think the only real challenge of making a PDIP is, is, is getting the two holes to meet. You know, when you uh, have I got a straight stem here? Anyway, essentially, when you're drilling, imagine that's a straight uh, stem. When you're drilling it, you'd have to drill it and stop short by a certain amount, and then drill a hole from the top at an angle to meet it. Once you've done that, you're good. You just need to then, you know, do your usual. Um, filing and stuff like that with a round file um, and then then you would just uh, bend the stem the normal way but I suppose that would allow you to take it if it was say 4 mil you could take it 4 mil all the way um, it would just mean that uh, you'd have trouble with the thickness of the of the bite zone maybe unless you made a slightly elongated hole at the top to compensate. Uh, it would take, I imagine it would take some practice to get it right, but I, I would imagine it's certainly doable. I would imagine they have machines for doing it. You'd have to drill the top of the stem to make the, the, the actual hole in the bite zone, but the actual draft on it is going to be in the center the usual way. Well, if you like P-lips, uh, Glenn, then that would make sense. I've tried P-lips before and didn't really like them. Um, So I, if I do buy a Peterson, it's generally, and I don't very often do that, but if I did, it would be a, it would be a fishtail. Hey, Jeffrey. All right, let's get to these pipes. I'm just enjoying this uh, tobacco too much. It's like having a, a wee dram together with your smoke.
Hey, Victor. All right, so we can start first with uh, the main stand over here. So this, this is one of mine. It's an LCS uh, Apple. Um, this is a, a pipe which is kind of designed off a, a, a Lars Everson kind of idea. And um, I've made a few of these, sold quite a few. Really nice shape and just lovely pipe. I use this one to smoke Latakia blends. Well, this one's falling off, so we'll use this one. Let me turn that light off. This is uh, a Stanwell Golden Contrast ball pipe or egg pipe. Um, I got this as an estate, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, something like that. I smoke uh, pretty much exclusively uh, vanilla cream in this one. McBaron's vanilla cream. And the same goes for this one. This is an LCS billiard and with it, it's got a mortar band on this and this one also I smoke vanilla cream. Um, this is one of the very few LCS sandblasted, real sandblasted pipes. It's got a very nice ring grain, really nice, beautiful bent billiard or apple kind of shape. Maybe a bit of an egg shape from the front. And I had this one sandblasted. Smokes very well. And uh, this one is also for Latakia based blends. Uh, Benton Billiard. This one is for Virginias and Vapors. And I've been smoking it almost exclusively um, with all it golden sliced. Gets regular use that pipe. My Peterson is still working fine, yeah. It's the third one though, um, I had to send two back. This is my... Uh, Northern Briars, Quebec. Um, this one is also for Virginia's Vapors, that kind of thing. Uh, Virginia Burleys, if I occasion to smoke one of those. Um, this is a birthday pipe I had him make for a birthday gift for myself in 2017, and he dated it with my the, the, with the birthday date on it. Um, this is a pipe I recently took for myself. It was on the website for sale, carved blasted um, egg. Well, you can get it from me, Andrew. You're still to buy a pipe from me. Just kidding. All right, this is a Michael Burke's pipe. This thing is half out for some reason. This is a commissioned acorn sandblasted. And this one I smoke pretty much also exclusively some bear in this one. <laughs> Josh, um, some bear, occasionally all it golden sliced, but it's mainly some bear that I smoke in that one. Over here, we have my strawberry or acorn, yeah. Um, more strawberry because it's got the pointed base, you're right. Um, this is the Chubby Apple, which I made, reverse plateau, uh, which I kept for myself. Virgin, unstained, beautiful piece of briar. This is my bamboo freehands, billiard-ish, Dublin-ish, freehand basically. Nice plateau, lovely bit of bamboo, and of course that beautiful Eldritch stem.
don't know if that's focusing or not. Next up we have my Phil Rivara Calabash with a Cumberland stem. He, I recently sent it back to him to convert it to 9mm. It's a proper Calabash. Here we have a pipe by RC Sands. I bought this on eBay a good while back. Um, it's actually a fantastic smoking pipe. Um, I just went for it because it had a weird, not weird, I shouldn't say that, an unusual sort of um, expansion here at the bottom. So you've got this straight line and then it kind of gets bulbous underneath and goes around to a very nice textured finish. That smokes very well, I smoke Virginia's in that. Next up is this uh, Pipe Club of London Chacon 2021 Pipe Club of London Pipe of the Year, Squat Bulldog, and I've smoked it a few times, and I can tell you it smoked fantastic from the first smoke, and I've just managed to procure another one of these, and uh, I may well put that up for sale at some point. Josh. Close your eyes. Next up is a square shanked Ascorti panelled billiard. And this is uh, being coveted by Josh for quite some time. Um, but um, this one I originally smoked. <laughs> Glenn. Um, this one originally I smoked. Um, and for a full aroma in this almost exclusively. Now I, I pretty much smoke anything, whatever I fancy. Whenever I fancy the pipe, um, I'll smoke whatever I fancy uh, smoking at the time. I don't smoke full aroma very much, so it gets used for anything now. Which pipe was that for, uh, Glenn? Next up is a Meerschaum. This one is a commissioned pipe by Koch Pipes, K-O-C. LCS Briars. It's a bent billiard. Smoked it a few times. Actually, it's quite a good idea. Maybe I'll try that with this um, tobacco at some point. It's Turkish, yeah. I assume it's Turkish. The guy is, I can't remember his name now, but it's its called Koch Meerschaum Pipes, K-O-C. And this one you've seen many times before. This is the Pipe Club of London, with the emblem Pipe Club of London, PCOL, carved into the pipe. Absolutely stunning pipe. Done a great job on the carving. And this was from 2018, and it's had a fair amount of smoking, uh, not as much as some people, but um, it's in really, really nice condition. A little bit of colour, nothing crazy. Um, if I get a really rich tobacco, which I find too heavy, um, I'll sometimes smoke it in a meerschaum just to take the edge off it. Um, so that's that one. Next up is another Escorti, also a square shank, a bent apple or billiard. A really, really nice pipe. This is a Christmas pipe from 1992, if I remember correctly. 1997. I don't know why this camera doesn't focus close up. I don't know how you do that. I'm on a Samsung at the moment on an S10 
it's focusing there, but if you tap on the screen, shouldn't it focus? Nice um, colour on there, silver colour. Next up is one of mine, which I made a long, long time ago. I had a lot of issues and I ended up having to really take that down very, very short. Um, had some nice grain on it. I think I'm getting too much distraction from the pipes behind. Maybe that's affecting the focus. Short smoke. Haven't smoked it in a while, but it smokes. Yeah, so on an iPhone, it tends to, when you tap the screen, it does focus, but when you're live, I'm not sure that does work. Then we have this uh, Duncan Briars, which I converted to 9mm and put a different stem on, a 9mm stem. Nice freehand. And this is um, a pipe I had made after seeing a pipe that Glenn has, which um, Jim Duchesne made for him. and. I had pictures of that which I took at the time off the screen and sent it on to Na um, Fabrizio Natalizia. So a really nice bent apple. Cumberland stem. This was a custom order. I smoke Balkans in that one. This is uh, Chacon. With beautiful green. This is uh, like a freehand type uh, of pipe. It's not a. St I don't think it's a standard shape. I'm not sure, but it was a one-off because of the. Um, it has. A, it has actually been in a sale in the past. Uh, it's not been in a sale recently. Uh, Cumberland stem. I saw this at uh, the pipe show in Nottingham in 2018, I think it was, and. I ended up buying a Savinelli and I didn't buy this and I regretted it. I called him the next day and he sold it to me. He still had it. Very, very nice pipe, that one. And we have my Stanwell 2020 pipe, pipe of the year. Nice sandblast. You could get this in a smooth and rusticated and sandblast, and I went for the sandblast. I like sandblasted pipes. Actually smokes very, very well. It's not a Danish one, it's a current version made in Italy. But I would say for me the key difference, um, yeah, the shape is fantastic. Classic freehand, double in. Um, uh, for me, the, the key difference is the stem. Um, the difference between the current versions and the older Danish versions. I find that the button on the Danish versions was much finer, uh, much more refined. But they smoke well, the briar is fine.
I do have a couple of corn cobs flying around somewhere. They may be out in the garage because I was kind of considering doing a conversion on them, you know, to put my own st uh, shank and stem on them. So I think they're in the garage. I think I've got two at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, Glenn, very, very true, very good point. A lot of times, um, I used to avoid Dublin's quite a lot, quite a lot, because of that problem. Um, and then I discovered that it was actually Ben um, Unicorn Piper who, who made the point that um, if you get one with a tapered bowl, then it shouldn't be any different to any other pipe. Um, as long as there's a consistency in the thickness of the walls, the shape shouldn't make a difference. It's only when you put a normal U-shaped bowl inside a Dublin that you get very thin walls towards the bottom. Um, and that's um, why you get a hot pipe. Um, so now I'll get one as long as it's, I mean, look at this one. This is a Boswell. Um, I've put a new stem on it, I made a hand cut that stem, but um, this one is an extreme Dublin, but the inside is an extreme, a very, very pointy V-shaped bowl, no problem. Uh, Rusty, the difference between a Canadian and a Dublin, a Dublin is the shape of the bowl, where the bowl, is a, it's, it tapers down. Um, that's what a Dublin is. A Canadian usually refers to a billiard, a standard billiard shaped bowl, but a flat oval shank. Um, a little bit like this, maybe not as wide, but that kind of idea. Um, and it will have a tapered, a tapered um, stem rather than a saddle like that. Um, I think if it has a saddle, it would be called a, um, either a Liverpool or I forget the other one. Liverpool maybe is the one with a round, long shank, I forget. But basically, that's the difference. A Dublin is a The accent, yes, <laughs> very good. Lumberman, there you go. I forget the names, but anyway. Um, so yeah, if you get a, a V-shaped chamber, it's no problem with a Dublin pipe. When I first started making Dublins, I made them with U-shaped um, bowls, and that was a problem until Ben pointed that out. I've got to give him credit for that. Um, next one is this uh, Bentley by Former. Uh, beautiful pipe, bent billiard, and this one I used to smoke 40th anniversary and almost exclusively. It used to be a bit of a like a Friday Savinelli situation. I used to smoke this on Fridays with 40th anniversary. I don't do that anymore, but um, it's a very very nice smoking pipe. Um, next up, we have Briar Blues, shape 55 by Radice from 2019, I think it was. Yeah, 2019 Pipe of the Year. Briar Blues. I also have the 2020, but I haven't smoked it yet. Is the 2020. He's got the 2021 20, coming up as a 25th anniversary pipe, but he hasn't sold it, they haven't arrived yet. That's the 2020 version, beautifully drilled. Um, I've kind of been telling myself that I need to resand this and restain it because um, it's got beautiful grain under that ox blood, beautiful grain. It's an Ebershawn block, perfect positioning on the cross grain. And uh, the only reason I can find that they've stained this so dark is a little tiny dot. Can you see that dot there? There? That's the only thing I could come up with. I mean, it could be when I sand it, I'll find something else, but I haven't yet been able to find anything else. I don't know if they fill their pipes or not, if they put in fills, but uh, I'm very tempted to sand this one back. Beautiful pipe. And it's actually surprisingly lightweight for its size, it's like an author shape. Um, yeah, that's a nice pipe. Then we have a Tom Phillips uh, freehand, beautiful grain.
got a little bit of a panelled kind of thing going on on the shank. Cumberland stem. This was also a commission. Really hefty, chunky pipe. I've re-drilled this now because the I find his draft holes were too narrow. I had that with all of um, all of his pipes that I've had. I've had four pipes from him, um, or maybe five, and um, four or five. I have at the moment two, and uh, as far as I can tell, those are going to stay with me. Um, so that's this one. Next one up is Astley. Really nice grain. Um, silver band, 9mm, Dublin, with a bit of a curved edge there. It's almost like a goblet kind of design. Yeah, definitely, some of them definitely inspired some shapes, no question. Uh, what else? This is a GBD Jubilee, actually made as a 9mm pipe, and I've said this many times, this is, um, the ones that I smoke are generally on racks, um, the ones which I smoke occasionally are in drawers, um, and ones which, you know, don't really get smoked very often, but they still do get smoked every so often, um, those are still in drawers, but the ones that I get smoked fairly regularly are in racks. And the ones that get smoked very regularly are on my desk. Um, so this is a GBD pot. And I've said this before, this is a, um, uh, a Latakia pipe and it's my best smoking pipe in terms of... Um, it's quite uh, oxidised, I haven't smoked it in a while. Um, but it smokes effortless, effortlessly. It's an amazing smoking pipe, I have to say. So that gets uh, smoked with Latakias. Next one is one of mine. It's a uh, quite an old, early pipe of mine. It's an LCS Quebec, a taller kind of stacked Quebec, um, with a sort of expanded junction there. Good smoking pipe. Um, this one is mostly used for all in golden sliced. Very nice smoking pipe, this one. Very lightweight, it's got a good bend to it, so I often take this one out. It often lives in my EDC bag. This one is a Millville pipe. Um, with a pl I'm not sure if this is a plateau or a rustication on the top, I'm unsure. I'm going to guess that it's a plateau which has been smoothed over. Um, and this one has got some really nice grain on it. I did brighten it up a little bit because the grain was hidden, because it had either either it was um, just patina, or it was just you know these pipes were made a good while back and they didn't really worry about grain too much. But it's got some really really it's, just, it's not focusing I don't think, but it's got very nice grain. Uh, I converted this one and put a stem on it, didn't do a great job, you can see it's slightly off, but it smokes well, it's a good smoking pipe. Next up we have this gorgeous Savinelli autograph, ring grain sandblast, stunning sandblast. Absolutely beautiful pipe. This one gets uh, smoked with uh, Virginias and Vapors, that kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's a pipe I enjoy to just kick back with when I'm sitting at my desk. Um, I can clench it, it's not that heavy, but it's a... Uh, this is an eBay but I find, yeah? And it had a very neutral flavor um, in the bowl, no ghosting. Um, and uh, I, f I fell in love with it immediately. It smoked great from the off. Have an early autograph. The next one is another Tom Phillips pipe. I have a terrible memory, Rusty, as anybody who watches my channel will know. But when you smoke 
on a regular basis. You, some things you just eventually it just squeezes into your memory. Um, so this is a bulldog again by Tom Phillips. You can see the TP there. Sadly, he, he doesn't make pipes anymore. He hasn't for a good couple of years now. But this is a beautiful. Reminds me of the finish of the rustication that Les Wood used to do. Very similar. And this is another. This was another order um, that I had uh, from him, a uh, commission. And Cumberland stem, a very very thin stem, so I have to be careful with it. And I redrilled this one as well, um, but I did not redrill the stems because that would involve bending them back up and blah blah. Um, so I just drilled the draft hole. Um, I think that's basically it for the pipes that I smoke on a regular basis. I, mean, I did smoke this one. This is a, a recent uh, Quebec that I ordered a smaller version. Um, but uh, in the end, I'm probably not going to keep this one. This is another Northern Brides Quebec with a Cumberland stem, a sand Cumberland stem. And I'm probably going to put this one up for sale. I just need to clean it up a bit. Uh, this one, I keep going backwards and forwards on this one. This one I've smoked quite a bit. It's a Canadian, 9 mil Canadian Northern Briars. Um, I keep going backwards and forwards about whether I'll sell it or not. It's in my for sale bag. I've got a bag where I put pipes which I need to prepare and polish up. Um, but it's in the bag, but you know, kind of go keep going backwards and forwards on that one. There you go, Josh, just for you. Oh, there's another one which I haven't shown you. That's my Savinelli um, St. Nicholas from 2018, is it? 16? Might be 2016. It's, this is the, the second pipe I ever bought. Um, don't smoke it that often, to be honest. So maybe I should start using it for my vanilla cream, possibly. All the best, Patrick. Have a good one. So, those are my pipes that I smoke on a regular and fairly regular basis. Shelves. 
Now tobacco rotation is another can of worms, completely different can of worms. Because my whole smoking sort of habit has changed. Well, habit, people don't like the word habit when you talk about pipe smoking, but my own personal sort of uh, smoking preferences when it comes to tobacco has changed quite a bit and have become a bit codgery of late. And I'm smoking quite a concise group of tobaccos. Um, I've been smoking a pipe for coming up to six years now, so not a not as long as you might think. Um, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh yeah, tobaccos. So, um, my tobaccos, although I still dip into a wide range of tobaccos that I've got, and you guys have seen my uh, my cupboard behind me, in terms of tobaccos that I've got open. So, uh, those shelves are two jars deep. So there's shelves behind each of there's tobaccos behind each of those jars is another jar and uh, those are my open jars and then I've got containers like that with um, open tobaccos and there's tobaccos everywhere and then you've got my cellar over there um, so there is a lot of tobacco in here um, but at the moment I, I tend to be smoking things like Vanilla cream, Orlick Golden Sliced, Special Latakia Flake, 1820 Flake, some Northwoods, um, and those are pretty much uh, Erin Moore Flake. But I'll dip into other stuff all the time, but the ones that I'm smoking most of the time are those blends. Uh, my taste changed over the years, for sure. Um, I started off with a cherry blend. The very first bowl of tobacco that I smoked was in the Covent Gardens, I bought. Um, I still have that pipe actually. A butt Um I forget what this was called. It's made in Saint Claude. I forget the, the Mirage. That's what it was called. It was a smooth pipe, and I decided to rusticate it, and I completely butchered the pipe up, but I've kept it. Um, it's a good smoking pipe, but I haven't used it for a long, long time. I messed up the junction there. I mean, I did this a long time ago, maybe a couple of years back. Um, but that was the first pipe I bought. And I smoked a cherry blend in there. And um, I was in Covent Gardens at the time and I struggled to keep it alight. I overfilled it, filled it much too tight. Um, but um, I then bought that Savonelli St. Nicholas pipe. And that um, is where I learned to smoke a pipe, was on that Savonelli. And then I think after that I bought uh, a Boswell pipe. And then I discovered the Danish pipe shop. I bought a shed load of pipes from them. A lot of um, Soren Refberg pipes. I've been through a shed load of his pipes. I've only got one left, which is I think the first one that I bought. The first Soren Refberg pipe that I bought. Um, I've got a couple of Lassa Skov Skovgard pipes, which I don't smoke. Um, I've got um, some other pipe, pipe Club of London pipes, which I haven't smoked. I've got some Sir Jacopo pipes that I haven't smoked. I have got some nice pipes which I haven't smoked, but I haven't shown you those simply because I don't smoke them. They're not in my rotation and they're not going up for sale either. They're just pipes that I keep.
Nah, don't polish them, just show them as they are. That's what I've done. People can see that you're smoking them. Well, these silver balls, the idea was to use in my magnet stand, which I recently made, but they don't work. I'm currently using some steel discs. And it's magnetic, you see I can tilt it and it still holds it. For the most part. But anyway, it's magnetic. <clears throat> I've um, drilled the block, put a magnet inside, and then put a cap on it, a disc, using the same wood. That's on the band here. So it's a pipe and stand and tamper set. Which I've made for a customer. <clears throat> it's that kind of, it looks like lead. It, it's, it says steel, it must be some kind of alloy because it's not very magnetic. Worship you without the crucifixion too, Glenn. You can polish them. I didn't show you this pipe. This is another French a guard hill pipe, St. Claude. Um, I, haven't, I mean, I've smoked it in a while, but I did put it out for sale recently and I polished it up and cleaned it. disc wasn't in there. Yes, I did have another one. Don't remember what I did with that. Are you trying to say that I sent that to you, Josh? I don't remember. to Hector. <laughs> I don't remember. You're a dog lover. Cool. Well, these are uh, Ben Wade, which is a well-known Tabacchiana or Smokiana brand. Um, Wade, England. There is a set of these. There's about a set of six or eight of them, different dogs. Some of them are really hard to get. Some of them are easier to get. This is one of the easier ones, the Terriers. Um, but you can get them on eBay sometimes, but they're not cheap anymore. They're quite collectible. Um, I have to ask Ed, actually, if he's got the whole set. It wouldn't surprise me. It's the type of thing he would have. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Pipe Tree would have a good selection of them. In fact, I think he sent me this one. Um, so there's a few. I think there's an Alsatian dog. I think there's a possibly a poodle. There's various different dogs. They're very cute. <clears throat> they're nice. They're nice stands. Are those horizontal disposable tobacco devices? These ones. Um, these ones I just got sent me um, as a freebie. I ordered a couple of tins of Perfection, and. Um, 
in the package came those. Not had them before. They're little cigarellos kind of thing. They've got filters on the top. Little cigar kind kind of things. It's a sample of three. It's a freebie. You're right, what a tree doesn't have doesn't exist. I did offer him a, a, a hand in peace, uh, Josh, recently, but he didn't respond. sent out a white dove but I didn't get a response when mutton shop came back on the first time uh, a few weeks back um, I put a comment on saying welcome back and uh, glad you're you know the last year whatever it was 18 months is behind you he's had some family issues so he, uh, that person you refer to, put a comment under mine saying that I'm a hypocrite, I've got a bad memory. Essentially saying because I criticised him the last time round. Um, so, because of the whole uh, computer gate saga. So I simply responded that just because I disagreed with what he did last time, it's, it's, he can do what he likes, but just because I disagreed with it, doesn't mean that I can't sympathise with his travails and uh, challenges that he's had to deal with. And it, I was happy that he was back on the screen. That was all true. You know, in this day and age, people can learn to disagree with somebody, but they don't have to dislike them because of it. It's very hard to do these days. People just don't seem to be able to do that. And um, I then extended a, a hand and a, an olive branch, and I said to him, you know, why not? Let's get in touch. Let's, um, you know, bygones be bygones kind of thing. But he didn't respond. <coughs> hey, Hawk. Yeah, it's just gone. It's just gone too crazy. Saludos, Ana. It's gone a bit crazy, you know. People just don't seem to be able to um, <clears throat> have the art of debate anymore. You know, to have a debate, to be able to disagree with somebody's position without disagreeing with them personally, it just doesn't exist anymore. One of the things which I enjoy is having a debate, having a, sometimes a theological discussion. You know, I have a, um, a Zoom that I join a couple of times a week sometimes, and we get into really deep religious discussions, faith discussions, creationist discussions, all of that kind of thing. And we, there's about half a dozen of us there, and there's at least three or four who are completely opposite sides of those theories. And we are the best of friends. <clears throat> it's so rare, though, these days. There wasn't a disagreement with Martin Chop, personally. It was just that he basically... Um, well, I don't know if it's necessary to go over it. There was a whole thing about him getting a new computer and getting equipment and so on, which prompted a frenzy to raise money for him, which they did. Whether he's bought a new computer or not, I have no idea. But at the time, it just, to me, it felt a little bit cap in hand kind of thing. That's just my personal opinion. He's entitled to do whatever he likes. It's his channel. And that was that. That was just my personal feeling at the time. I didn't cancel him. I didn't 
call him out. I didn't. I, I just suggested to him at the time that um, if you're really, really having some seriously tough financial um, issues, he was sitting in front of a display of a good few thousand dollars worth of pipes, um, and I suggested that perhaps he might consider selling a few of them if he if he needed that computer really that badly, then he might consider doing that. I certainly would before I put my cap in hand, but that's me. It was just a suggestion that I made at the time, and that was that. I didn't uh, attack him, I didn't uh, troll him or anything like that. I think he's given a huge amount to the, to the community. A lot of people have learned how to smoke a pipe off his videos. And that was that. Oh no, it wasn't a feud between me and Martin Chop. I mean, I doubt if he even read my message. He's had thousands of messages on his videos. It was between somebody um, who was um, who, who a person that I uh, exchanged packages with, um, and when he saw my comment, he commented that I was hypocritical. When he saw my more recent comment, and the reason why I fell out with this particular person was that he had sent me uh, a package, a care package, a very, very nice care package, which I was very grateful for. And he had had stuff from me more than once before. And when you get into these sort of calculations, when you're sending packages, then the whole spirit of the thing is lost. If you're going to have to start reckoning with a calculator, right, his stuff that he sent me was worth this amount. In that case, I'm expecting the same at least back from him. Once you start getting into those kind of calculations, that's, there's no point in doing it. You've lost the whole spirit of the YTPC. Um, <clears throat> and what happened was, he sent me a very nice package. I must admit it was a very nice package. He sent uh, a half a dozen, at least, tins of tobacco. There was probably 150 euros, maybe more, was worth of tobacco. It was a lovely package. And I fully intended to return fire, but my philosophy when it comes to gifts is that they're gifts if you have to ask for it or if you have to prompt for it then it's not a gift that means you, it shows that you're expecting something now there is an, an unwritten rule you know that well an unwritten expectation that when you send somebody a package that he'll send you one back but there's no obligation to do that and it should be given um, with goodwill once um, once, once there's a, a calculation made, once there's an expectation. That uh, crashed again and I had to resume, but it resumes with the facing camera, so there you go. Thank you very much, Aina. I appreciate that very much. I can just about work out what you said there. This is one of your favorite channels, thank you. Um, so, it, it, this guy sent me a package and I was sending him a package back. But, as I say, if somebody's expecting it within a certain time frame, then I'd rather you didn't send me a package. In fact, when people email me and they ask, can they send me a package, I'll usually discourage them. And it's only if they insist and insist that I will concede. But I usually, my first response is usually, thank you very much, I have enough tobacco, I have enough pipes, really not necessary. That's usually my first response. And um, if somebody really insists and they want to sort of, I understand that because when I first started off on the YTPC, um, I also wanted to get in on it. You know, we saw all these packages going to and fro, the friendships being created. And I wanted to be part of that. So you do contact people, a lot of them just don't bother responding. It was people like Briarblade, like Le Don Mott, that's why he was so popular. It was people like um, Daniel... Um, Shaw, Danny Shaw. And these kind of guys who responded. And it was, that's why, those are the kind of guys that I always had a lasting relationship with because they were so warm and friendly. Um, and we, I exchanged packages with those guys more than once. <clears throat> um, anyway, cut a long story short, this guy had sent me this very nice package. And I had made a pipe at the time, 
and he decided that he wanted that pipe and he threw out little hints here and there and um, eventually he got a friend to email me um, and that friend said that he really thinks that I should send that guy the pipe he sent me a, a nice package and I th he thinks it's only right that I should send him that pipe he likes that pipe and once I got that it turned me off completely you know, if you're going to tell me what to send as a gift, it's not a gift. How can that be a gift? And that, I, it just, I actually ended up selling that pipe, not be specifically for that reason, but I'm in the business of selling pipes, so that's what I did. Um, but we kind of fell out after that. Absolutely, Josh. I mean, you made me an ashtray, so I should really send you a lathe in return. <laughs> fair, it's a fair exchange, isn't it? Hey, Dusty. Yeah, exactly, you owe me a sticker, Josh. Actually, you said it was 30 or something, wasn't it? That's a good one, Igor. I like that. Hey, Daniel. How you doing? I've relit this uh, plum pudding bourbon. You're right, Josh. You did send me three rats. I've got three Roland substitutes. Ian, I'm sure you're right. Certainly my lid, anyway. Pero aprendo a escularo, escuarlo. Having the foggiest, you know. Well, I think James is, has achieved legendary status already. There's one of his uh, creations. I was explaining to my kids the other day. My daughter asked me how you make that. Did Glenn say he's off? All right, Glenn, have a good one. Mm. Not at all, Rusty. I did find it overpowering in the tin. The tin note is really overpowering. That is like heady stuff. You stick your nose in that, you can get drunk. Honestly, I'm not joking. It really is, it makes you a bit lightheaded if you're in there for too long. But in the smoke, I find it, 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 it is the Ford flavor, but it's not overpowering. I find this, this blend superbly well balanced. I will do a separate video, but uh, did tree come in? Hey, Tree, didn't see you there. Um, I find it to be very well balanced. I, I've just relit it. I've been talking and showing the pipes before, so I hadn't smoked it for about maybe 45 minutes. It's a little bit ashy now.
Yeah, I've got several ashtrays, but uh, this is the one I use because I don't want to <laughs> make my ashtrays dirty. So all I did is the bottom half of a tobacco tin. What was it? There you go, it shows you what I smoked and when I smoked it. Bob's Chocolate Flake, and that was in September 2016. And I just glued in the cork, and that's it. All right, I think this bowl is done. Very nice tobacco, James. Excellent choice. And I can really see, I don't know if you made your blend after smoking this or before, but it feels like it's inspired by it. see where you're coming from. I don't have a specific pipe for this one uh, because it's the first time I'm smoking it. I've smoked it in one of my Latakia pipes though, but it's actually the wrong thing to do because it's the Latakia is not forward at all in that pipe, in that cigar, in that tobacco. <clears throat> so I will select a pipe to smoke that in. I can also smoke James's uh, tobacco in it, and I can also smoke uh, from Morton Cellar. It's of a similar ilk, but it's not the same to me. Salani, Virginia. Oh, well, I think you got lucky there, Giri, that it's uh, okay after rehydration. Uh, oh, well, what I did get as well, which I got on Friday, together with this tin from James, because James just can't send one item, can he? And we got this as well. Two of these Spanish press, La Gloria Cubana. I've been looking them up a little bit to see what type of uh, cigar they are. And they seem to be a fairly, sort of a bit of everything in there. Which one, Rusty? This one? It's coming along fine. It's pretty much finished besides for some final sanding. There's the stand. I've got the magnet installed. A nice little disc of the same wood over it. And uh, it works very well. See you, Welsh Piper. Thanks very much. It's your favourite non-Cuban. How many would you say you've had, James? It's a bit late for me to start this at quarter to two in the morning, to be honest. Perhaps we can... Uh, have you sent any of these to... Um, to Josh? Perhaps we can do a three-way smoke. I smoked um, a lot of the Siri N and for November. Um, I probably smoked a couple of boxes of that um, back in the day when I was smoking a lot of New World cigars, probably about four years ago, something like that. Um, maybe three years ago. Um, I got those from Four Noggin. I haven't had any since. Um, I had one single one left and I smoked that a while ago. I think I smoked it. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah. 
terms of New World cigars, at the moment all I've got, there's not many at all. This container used to be full. And this one I got as a gift, it's a monster cigar. This is Draconian from Recluse. It's a new cigar, never smoked it. These I got from Izzy from uh, Happy Go Lucky Piper, Brickhouse Maduro. Got two of those. This is a uh, Dunhill aged Maduro. I got this in the Dunhill shop when it was first released. When Dunhill first released this cigar, this was the first one ever sold in the Dunhill shop. And uh, when I went in there and he told me that he hasn't sold any yet, I bought the first one and I've kept it ever since. It's got no value, nobody else is going to know if it's the first one or not, but I just kept it. This one is Dona Flor Silicao. Uh, I think I got this one from Mike Gamecock Piper a long, long time ago. I'm not sure what these are. What's amazing is this Bavida has been in this um, tapa door for maybe two or three years and it's still completely liquid. Never had to change it. Shows how moist the air is. Uh, well, there's this debonair hand rolled ultra premium Dominican Republic. La Aurora Gold. I haven't smoked any of those yet. And finally, this Trinidad, I think it's called. Yeah, Trinidad. Well, I had my second jab last week, um, and um, I felt a little bit lightheaded for about half an hour or two. And during the afternoon, I did a live, felt a little bit hazy, but within, I would say, four hours, I was okay. Um, I didn't really get sore or anything like that. I had a weird sensation as the injection went in felt like I got an electric shock in my arm. But it felt like he hit a nerve or something with a needle. But other than that, uh, thankfully I was okay. Tell a lie. I do have a, I do have these which were in my humidor, and uh, they're okay. But to be honest, I can't understand why they were piped the cigar of the year. These were cigar aficionado cigar of the year. I don't know when it was, 2019 maybe. I've smoked three of them. 2018 cigar of the year. Beautiful box, <laughs> but the cigar, I, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan. They're okay. Two New World are uh, hey flacker. Are these uh, a new release from GQ Tobaccos? They've released their own brand of cigars, um, Nicaraguan cigars. Uh, I did a video on one of them the other day. So this is the player. It's called Playa Playa Maduras, which is the Maduro Maduro version. And I did the video on the regular version. I've actually got a cigar which I started on Friday. Um, one of those Partagos ones that I sent you, Partagos D5. So I should really finish that first. This is my uh, beautiful ashtray which I had, which I commissioned a long while back. 
sadly, from Jason, Jason Bruno. And unfortunately, he doesn't do anything like this anymore. Any cigars recently, James? What was the last cigar you had? Well, there were two brands. All right, James, I think what Josh is saying is, please can you send him that cigar so we can do a three-way. <laughs> um, Monte Cristo, very nice. I'm not sure if I've got any left. I've got, I think, a few of those. Maybe a couple of the Monte Cristos left. Macanudo, Daniel, very nice. Oh, we can talk about that, Daniel. As I said earlier on, I don't like encouraging people to send me stuff. Um, find that with Cuban cigars, I can go back to them. Hoyder Nicaragua, that's a good brand, I have to say. I used to smoke the Hoyder Nicaragua, the red ones, the basic line red ones, and they were fantastic. Good night, Victor. Thank you for joining. Um, but I haven't followed those brands. I was quite um, sort of dedicated to some of the New World Cigar brands, um, like the La Gloria Cubana, the Hoya de Nicaragua. I had the, when they brought out the black one, I forget what it was called. So I bought those. Um, I was quite um, dedicated to Arturo Fuente. Uh, the short stories, the Hemingway short stories, I smoked a lot of those. I had a period where, of about a year, year and a half, when I almost exclusively smoked New World cigars. I, I got so angry with Cuban cigars, uh, the construction. I just said, fine, enough, enough is enough. And I just stuck with the uh, New World cigars. And, you know, you can't fault them on construction. Uh, the flavor profiles just, you know, they're not really, a lot of them are not my preference, but... Uh, All right, no worries, Dusty. Have a good one. Send Jack Nicholson after Nurse Ratchet. He'll sort her out. Or uh, send Dusty crazy after her. Many years ago, it was one of my top movies. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The performances in that film, just some of them, Danny DeVito, Jack Nicholson, um, the other guy who was Batman, what's his name? Um, he did Beetlejuice as well. Beetlejuice was a, a movie I liked as well. Going back 30 years, I think. Yeah, Michael Keaton. Thank you, Josh. I think they all did fantastic performances. 
in that film. It was about, I must have been around 20 at the time, maybe 21. And um, I fell in love at that time with Monty Python. Watched all the movies. Um, I fell in love with James Woods. I watched all his movies. Um, James Woods, his just whole manic kind of um, disposition, just, I was hooked on it. Thanks, Marty, all the best. I mean, uh, James Woods in um, El Salvador. Phenomenal. I love that movie. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Uh, he was in that movie. Of course, you had that, uh, Robert De Niro and, and the other guys in there as well, but... Good night, Smarty Bob. Thanks for joining us again. Have a great week. Um, what other movies? Back then. I mean, nowadays there's obviously more. You know, you've got the obvious ones, you know, Shawshank Redemption. Um, I'm a big fan of The Hunt for Red October. I just like that movie. I'm not going to say it's the best acting in the world. I mean, there's good acting in there, but it's just um, a movie that I like. Just everything about it. Um, what's my favorite cigar size? Robusto, without a doubt. Well, Robusto, yeah, but um, I can have short Robustos as well. I quite like the whole concept of a short Robusto because I like the 50 ring gauge. The 50 ring gauge, 48. 48 to 52 is my sweet spot when it comes to ring gauge. And length of cigar is, I would say, about four and a half inches is my sweet spot. Uh, classic Robustos is 50, five by 50. Scott of the ship. Vasily, one ping, please. Yeah, I know. Um, that's why I've never bought them, James. Um, and don't go buying them for me, please. Life will go on without it. Um, yeah, so 50 ring gauge is about classic for me. I, I smoke the Connoisseur number one, the H. Hartman Connoisseur number one, um, which is, uh, I think it's a 49, possibly. 48 or a 49 ring gauge. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with less as well. I mean, I enjoy the H. Upman Half Corona, which is a 44 ring gauge. I really like those cigars. I'm working my way through a box at the moment. I haven't had them long, and I've got, I'm up to the second layer already almost. So. Um, but yeah, for me, the Robusto is the best, is my favorite size. Um, yeah, 48 ring gauge is good, Daniel. Uh, Churchill, Churchill's a little bit long for me. You haven't done it already, have you, James? You're impossible. You're incorrigible. You know, each time you send me something, I keep delaying on send you, sending you your box. Because I've got to come up with something suitable. Plus, you can't keep a secret. <laughs> You're rich, dark, fake. I've smoked it, man. All that's left of it is the bag. It's empty. Look, empty bag.
truth of the matter is James just doesn't trust me. He thinks he's never getting it. He's probably right. I've decided to send it to Glenn. Well, that's a good idea, James. If that would bring you over, then go for it. I like 54 as well, uh, Jeff. Um, it is a bit of a mouthful, but I like them as well. But they tend to be on longer cigars. And I find nowadays that, you know, to really enjoy a cigar, you've got to, to really enjoy the journey, the evolution of the cigar, especially with Cubans, you know, the three stages. Um, most of the time I find myself out in the garage and smoking while I'm working, and I can't really appreciate them for that. And that's why I end up smoking something like the Half Corona or uh, a, a cigar that I'm very used to. And I'm not doing that many cigar videos because of that, because I just don't have the, the office time in here, enough of it, to be able to sit down and really enjoy a cigar, enjoy the evolution, put my mind to it, and savor the nuances between each stage of the cigar. Um, when I did the review the other day of the GQ tobacco cigar, I did it in the garage, but I stopped working. And I, I just don't like doing that. If I'm in there, I want to work, I want to be creative. And um, so I don't get the chance really that often to smoke good cigars and then sort of do videos of them. It just takes too much time. However, that might change now because um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get more photography jobs and I'll be in here processing images. So when I'm doing that, then I can do the videos while I'm doing that. So that you hopefully will be seeing some more um, cigar videos and some more tobacco, pipe tobacco videos. When I was smoking the New World cigars on a regular basis, Andrew, um, Toro was probably the, the most regular size. Um, which is on average a six inch uh, by 54, maybe even a 56. Um, the American Robusta size is bigger um, often than the Habanos, um, the Cuban Robusta size. So if you get a Robusto, say an Undercrown Robusto, it's likely going to be a 52 by say five and a half or something like that. Maybe even 54, I think they are. I think they're 54. The problem with Lanceros Hawk, especially if you're talking uh, Cuban, is that they're more often tight than the wider cigars. And that's one of the reasons why I stick to Robusto size, because with, uh, with Cubans, there's more chance of the cigar smoking okay um, with a wider ring gauge. Um, to smoke, to, to roll a Lanceros needs more skill. To successfully roll it so that you've got the blends in the right place, so you've got the Seco and the Ligero all in the right place so the cigar burns well, um, and much harder in a Lanceros. The narrow ring gauge is much harder. And oftentimes you'll find that they're um, tight. So I just stay away from them. I've just been burnt, excuse the pun, by them too many times. Plus, if you do get a tight Robusto, there's enough room there to be able to stab it and try and ease the blockage. With the Lanceros, you run the risk of going right through the wall of the cigar as well, because it's so narrow. Um, Daniel, yes, I do. I do often smoke a cigar in the car, especially after a wedding or a job, something like that. I love smoking a cigar in the car. I love smoking full stop in the car, whether it's a cigar or a pipe. Um, it's it's one of my favourite places to smoke a cigar or a pipe. I can take a picture of it if you like, James. I'll send you the picture and I'll keep the tobacco. 
Um, no, I don't. Um, I don't find that at all, Daniel. Actually, box press cigars oftentimes will give you a, a, a good burn, a better burn, um, because of the uniformity of the shape. Um, but uh, I don't smoke box presses that often to be able to give a really uh, educated opinion on it. I find, I find that when I, um, when I watch videos of Americans doing reviews of Cuban cigars, and very often you'll find that they think that it's absolutely quite rubbish, um, and that they find it very bland and it doesn't have any flavor. And on the reverse, if you have a guy who smokes Cubans like myself, and smokes uh, a New World cigar might find that it's too rich, too peppery, too heavy, and, and it's it's just a matter of what you're used to. Um, I find that the Cubans, the the flavour is is more nuanced. It is it isn't as full and as strong as a lot of New World cigars, but once you're used to it, you can then get the nuance in the flavours. I've smoked plenty of box press cigars. Those um, 2018 pipe uh, cigar of the years, those are box pressed. Um, the Oliva Serie V Milanios are box pressed. No shortage of uh, you know of box press cigars, but I've never, it's never something which has hit me as a problem. I've never noticed that they are more prone to bad burn line um, than round ones. Um, I'll tell you the same as I tell everybody, Daniel, um, in terms of the price. You don't need to email me. I can tell you now. Um, my commissions start at £160. And um, depending on the, how well the pipe comes out, depending on the quality of the briar, the grain, the price goes up. So depending on what I use, if it's a hand-cut stem or not, um, that will all affect the price. Um, I do my best to keep the price within 200 pounds, but if the pipe demands it, it can be more than that. So that's really um, how it works. I mean, pipe 404, as an example, it wasn't a commission. But it, um, it worked out to be a stunning pipe. The grain on it is just unbelievable. And it's a hand cut stem. And it was an existing customer who's bought a few pipes from me already. So I kept to what I tried to do and I charged 200 pounds for the pipe. In my opinion, this pipe is worth a lot more money than that. Um, but because it was a regular customer and I wanted to reward his support, um, I gave him a fantastic price on it. A beautiful hand cut stem. Uh, saddle bit stem and uh, I think it's an absolute bargain for 200 pounds Amazing grain on this pipe Oh yeah, I wouldn't take any more money from you, Daniel, until the pipe is done and you're happy with it. Um, I'll send you the pictures or you'll see a video um, and then you send the balance. Hey Joe, how are you?
the one that got away. Hopefully there'll be more like that. Just got to get lucky with the grain, that's all. I mean, uh, the shaping is a shape I've done many times before. Uh, bent apple, it's a very common pipe of mine. The shape that I enjoy doing. Um, I really, it's one of my favorite shapes. Um, hence, I do it often because I just enjoy it. But uh, the grain doesn't always happen. Kim, will you slap James with a wet fish, please, across the face? I can just hear Amber guffawing in the background. Speak to my pimp. <laughs> Speak to Josh. I'm going to look through my briar. Kim, an honoured guest. Wow. Did you slap him? They say behind every great man is a tolerant woman. <laughs> a very tolerant woman in this case. Well, Josh, if he hasn't seen it, just tell him it's got potential. James, you got to get Kim in front of the camera next time on next Tuesday and do a joint live. You know what you should do? You should do a family one. You should have you all sitting on the couch there on the sofa. Move the camera the, the camera a little bit further back. And just have you all sitting there. Happy family. You like to flip people over, James, don't you? Let's be honest. Yep, um, James is an author, author, author shape. <clears throat> You'll pass on that, Kim. I guess you're camera shy, and that's quite understandable. And it wouldn't be fair to James because you'd totally eclipse him if you did. Right, James. I'm sure you make a great team. <clears throat> that is certainly very evident from the videos, even though you're not in front of the camera, so. You can write down names in front of the camera, that's no excuse. And for the people that like a bit of gore, you can show his scar. I'm not sure what Amber's got to show us, but I'm sure she's got something. 
of interest. Perhaps uh, results from her um, university that she's doing. What was it she's studying? Can't remember. <clears throat> was it psychology, maybe? I didn't get away with it, Josh, did I? Pharmacist, cool. There you go, somebody to get your drugs. Chocolate, anyone? Yum. What age are they, uh, James? Is it 16 and 18? Have I got that right? <coughs> it is a tobacco jar. I got this as a gift from a very, very well-known, very popular member of the YTPC, but he uh, didn't want to be mentioned. And it says, take a pipeful. 13 and 19, I thought Hunter was older than that. Um, and I've actually recently been considering very strongly using this for all your golden slice because I smoke it so often. But I haven't yet. What I'm kicking myself is that when I went to the Zrati cell, she had the uh, literally hundreds of tobacco jars. She had stacks of Dunhill ones, you know the Dunhill white ceramic jars or china jars in a sort of a amphora kind of pot shape. She had them in various different sizes. I'm kicking myself that I didn't take any, that I didn't buy any of them. I keep meaning to get back in touch with her to ask if I can come down and see what else she's got left. I think after the sale, um, I think I went to her twice in the end. And I think pretty much everything else was shipped off to America. She still has some stuff because she, every so often she puts stuff up on, on eBay, but I'd like to go back again. Um, but uh, the whole lockdown and all of that put paid to that. And financially, it's not a good time now. So, But I really would like to go back there, see what she's got left. English pipe fact as well, Donna is still running. Um, I think that um, Chariton is still running, but it's not the original Chariton. Um, Duncan Briars is still going, but again, it's not, I don't think it's the original. Um, I think GBD is still running, um, Barling is still running, but none of them are the original factories, but they, they still are putting out pipes. I think Dunhill is the only original one left. Um, and then you've got Peterson, which is Irish. Uh, 
There's no such thing as you should send anything, uh, Jeff. Really not necessary. Blake Ma, yeah, but that's he's, he's I wouldn't call him necessarily a factory. He's a somewhere between a factory and an artisan pipe maker. He's he's a man on his own. He's not a factory. They're not machine made his pipes. They're, they're made by hand with the machines, but they're not made on copy machines or anything like that. Still got limited use of this finger. Haven't had it sorted out yet. cigar is kicking my butt a little bit that's why I'm eating the chocolate uh, Daniel you know as uh, Ganji said before you know it's it's like any possession that belongs to somebody nobody else has a right over it if somebody passes away it's up to the family what they decide to do with them sometimes pipe smokers have been collecting I was talking to somebody about that not long ago on one of the lives maybe it was a zoom we were talking about you know people who have collected pipes all their lives and their family members perhaps don't know much about it and there's more than one person that I can think of right now who collects pipes, smokes pipes, loves pipes but their other half absolutely hates it and they don't even know that they smoke a pipe or they don't want to know and the first opportunity they get to dump them they would and you could be talking about pipes worth thousands of dollars there are people out there who, I mean, I don't want to mention names because I don't want to put any any bad luck on them or anything like that, but there are people that we know who are already advanced in age and they're still buying pipes, <clears throat> a lot of pipes. Um, and age has always got anything to do with it. You've got, nobody knows you know, when their time is up. But there's people there out there who have got huge amounts of tobacco, huge amounts of pipes, and when they go, that stuff goes to a to a, a second hand shop uh, a thrift store what you call a thrift store in the states a lot of times a lot of times people will leave instructions if it's something that they've done for years and their family is being supportive of it but a lot of times it won't a lot of times a lot of history just goes in the dumpster it's a crying shame but it happens <coughs> James. But I'm older than you, so you have to have a backup plan. Hey, Tim. Send him to Josh. Or even better, send them to Jason Mouton. And he'll make your family a lot of money. But 
But what, what always gets me, what gets me always is when I think about this, is that there are people out there who have been collecting pipes all their lives. And they may have thousands of pipes, literally thousands of pipes, hundreds of pipes. And those pipes will mean, have meant so much to that person throughout their life. And that aspect of it completely goes, it's gone. That, that relationship is gone. Look, it is a piece of wood, um, and it's it, that's all it is. Um, I, I must be honest, I'm not that kind of pipe uh, keeper. I don't call myself a pipe collector as such, because my pipes come and go quite a lot. I, I don't I have that many pipes, which I will say that I will always keep. In fact, I don't think there's a single pipe, um, aside from perhaps the ones that I've been gifted, but. I don't think there's any pipe that I would say is irreplaceable in my in my uh, in my in, in the pipes that I've got that I smoke regularly. There are some pipes that I don't smoke, like the commemorative pipes, pipes of the year, and things like that, which aren't replaceable usually. Um, but generally speaking, for me, the only reason I'm, I'll, I'll keep a pipe continuously is because it smokes very well, and um, a lot of the pipes that I sell on. They will smoke perfectly well for the next guy, but it just doesn't suit me. Um, a lot of times, you know, you, you feel bad about passing on a pipe which hasn't worked out for you, but it's really not an issue. You know, the whole estate market is full of that. Um, you know, one person's absolute rubbish pipe, a stinker of a pipe, is the absolute best smoker for the next person. So don't feel guilty about that. The only time you need to feel guilty is if the pipe has got a problem. You know, if it's cracked, if the shank is cracked, or there's a hole in it or something like that and you cover it up then that's a problem but other than that just if it doesn't particularly work well for you no problem passing it on um, and the ones that I keep up tend to be the ones that work for me Here he is, he's still here, Boris is here. <coughs> I want to start doing some... Um, I actually got in touch with Missouri Mirsham a while ago. And he asked me if I could buy a bulk of corn cobs without anything fitted, without any shanks and without stems. So I could do them myself. A bit like what Jake Hackett does. But they wouldn't sell them to me. Um, I, I've got to find out where you can buy the corn cobs in bulk. I'm sure there are places that you can get them, um, but uh, there must be places where you can buy corn cobs ready for smoking, but just the bowl. And to start buying corn cobs, then taking them apart seems a bit silly. I like that concept of what uh, um, um, John Keller does. JWK and uh, what Jake Hackett does it's basically a high-end corn cob so you, you've got the corn cob and you put your own shank on it and your own stem on it um, and it's basically a custom pipe it's an artisan pipe but with a corn cob bowl um, I like that idea I think it's a nice idea it gives people access to your pipes for much less money, less work involved for you because you're not doing much work to the cob itself. <clears throat> he sells the bowls on their own without anything on them, Vermont freehand. Yeah, well, you don't just pick a cob out of the field and, and smoke it. It has to be dried. They then have to coat it with plaster. Um, has to be dyed, trimmed. Obviously, the corn has to come off it. And then they fill the sockets, the corn sockets, with a certain plaster.
All right, treat. Good night. Yeah, well, England are playing tomorrow night in the final of the European Cup. Good night, Andrew. Enjoy your, uh, hope you catch a tuna. Send me a can. And I hope you get some footage. That would be cool. Um, yeah, so England are playing in the final tomorrow at Wembley. And um, we have a a weekly Zoom on Sundays, so uh, Sunday and Wednesday, so on Wednesday England played in the semis, so um, I wasn't on until afterwards. So we made a bit of a family event out of it, the last game, and the kids were up till late watching it because there was extra time, and uh, till all that got finished, it was late. It's a big day tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Cool. Thank you very much for that, uh, Opossum. Appreciate that. I'll have a look at that. Um, I've just had a look, Vermont Freehand has them, but they're out of stock. The 10 packs are out of stock. And the singles, they've only got one left. I'm not going to order one. <clears throat> yeah, that is ideally what it would be the ideal thing, but they're out of stock. Thank you very much for the link, though. I'll look at it again in future.
<coughs> well, the whole thing about taking the knee. Um, it's it's just they're taking it the wrong way. And I think the the controversial event when that first started was back in uh, 2016. I'm just looking at it on Google. When Colin Kaepernick took the knee um, as a protest for Black Lives Matters, Black Lives Matter, and um, it was a, a protest against the American anthem that oppresses color. I, I think, if I understand it correctly, that's what it's saying. Whereas it's be, so it's become uh, a status kind of thing of, of anti-racism and an anti-racism gesture. Um, and the England football manager, Gareth Southgate, has been saying that the England um, team have been taking the knee before the kickoff. Uh, but I don't think it's as a, um, a protest against the national anthem or to say, saying that uh, Britain is racist as such. I'm not saying there isn't racism here, but they're, they're, I don't think that's, they're, they're taking it as a stand against racism generally. I think that's what they're saying. Um, and uh, but some people are criticizing it because uh, it basically is a part of the cancel culture and um, and uh, he's saying that the, the kneeling shows support for the political goals of um, the people who want to crush capitalism, defund the police, destroying family units, and attacking Israel. Um, that's essentially what a lot of people are using it for, but he claims that it's not, he's saying that it's such a, a statement against racism generally. <coughs> um, If it's if it's become a symbol, an anti-racist symbol, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I didn't have a problem with it at all anyway. Um, you know, if people want to make a stand, um, as long as it doesn't get out of hand, and as long as people um, don't use it to oppress other people, because that's essentially um, what it what it started out as, as a protest against oppression. If it then becomes an oppressive gesture in itself, that is kind of counterproductive and hypocritical. I did hear that um, that all the data packages. I'm not sure which company or if it's all of the mobile companies here in the UK. From I think 6 p.m. until maybe midnight or, so, or the next morning or something like that, all of data is free. Any data that you use on your phone is free. It's to give everybody in England the opportunity to watch the match, and and it doesn't cost you to do that. So if you're un unable to get in front of the TV, you can get it on your phone, and it won't cost you your data. Jeff, those I think are empty. Maybe not all of them, I'm not sure. Let me check. This one's full, by the way, all in golden sliced. This is pre the change um, to when they, this one has got Burley in it as opposed to Harik. So that's, I think, before 2003. Quite nice. 
I think this is one of uh, Daniel's favorites. It's nearly empty and it's dry to a crisp because it's not inside a humidor, top of door. <coughs> that one's empty. Christmas chair 2014. <laughs> Excuse me. 40th anniversary, that one's empty. Two thousand and five. That one's empty, but I got I've got it in a jar on my shelf behind me. Oh, this is Virginia Woods. Oh wow! I completely forgot about this. This has got half a uh, thing in there, but it's still plenty moist. It's a very moist tobacco. I had two tins of this. And this is what started London Fog. It was a combination of these two tobaccos. There was an aged tin of this, Virginia Woods. This is 2017, but the one I had was like from 2009 or something like that. And that was the first, and it was mixed with a tin of this old Audit Golden Sliced. And that was my first version of London Fog. That's where it all started. A great blend. Good night, Apostle. All the best. Jose, hi. Welcome aboard. <coughs> oh, that's out. I don't, don't think I'm going to relight really that. Well, gentlemen, I think it's time to call it a night. It is quarter to three in the morning. I'm going to say thank you to everybody for joining me. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Hawk. Thank you, James. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Opossum. Thank you, Boris. Thank you, Joe. And J Jose Babio. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Hey, Jeff, Crosby's Corner. I didn't see you there. Welcome aboard once again. Uh, thank you, Hawk. Thank you, Andrew, who's gone already. Tree, who's gone. Ganji, if he's still there. Tim. Beaumont. And everybody else. Thank you very much for joining. Very much enjoyed this evening's chit chat. Um, perhaps we'll see you tomorrow for a, a pipe making session. We'll see how it all goes. The evening, of course, will be occupied by watching England probably lose to Italy, if we're honest, if we're being honest with ourselves. Um, but we shall see how we go. You never know. You never know. But for now, I'm going to wish you well. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one.